Walk with me. Give ear, O oh my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth, and I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children, showing the generation to come the praises of the I Am, and his strength and his wonderful works that he hath done. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers, that they should make them known to their children, that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. And might not be as their fathers a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their hearts aright and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. The children of Ephraim being armed and carrying bows turned back in the day of battle. And they kept not the covenant of the Most High and refused to walk in his law. Yes and forgot his works and wonders that he showed them. Marvelous. Yes, marvelous. Things he did in the sight of their fathers in the land of Egypt, in the field of Zon. He clave the rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink as out of great depths and he brought streams out of the rock and caused the waters to run down like rivers. And they sinned yet more against him by provoking the Most High in the wilderness. And they tempted God in their heart by asking meat for their lust. Yea, they shall spake against God, and they said, Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Behold, he smote the rock, that the waters gushed out and the streams overflowed. Can he give bread also? Mm -hmm. And he can provide flesh for his people. Therefore the I am heard his heard this and was wroth. So a fire was kindled and Jacob and anger also came up against Israel. Because they believed not in God and trusted not in his salvation. Though he had commanded the clouds from above and opened the doors of heaven and had rained down manna upon them to eat and had given them of the corn of heaven, man did eat angels' food. That's figuratively. He sent them meat to the full and he caused them wind to blow, wind to blow in heaven and by his power he brought in the south wind. And he rained flesh also upon them as dust and feathered flowers like the sand of the sea. And he let it fall in the midst of the camp around about their habitations. So they did eat and were well filled. For he gave them their own desire. And they were not estranged from their lust. But while the meat was yet in their mouth, the wrath of God came upon them and slew the fattest of them. And smote them down and the chosen men of Israel. For all this day they sinned and believed not his wondrous works. Therefore their days did he consume in vanity and their years in trouble. Yes. Deliver me. And that was Psalms chapter 78. Verses 1 through 33. Deliver me from the hands of evil spirits who have swayed over the thoughts of men's hearts. And let them not lead me astray from thee, my God. Establish thou me in my seed forever that we go not astray from henceforth. And forevermore, Jubilees chapter 12 and verse 20. Yes, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, those of you on this platform and those shared platforms. Yes, with a hand clap of praise, we thank God for those of you that have been with us since the beginning. And those of you that have been with us thereafter and here and there is about. And we thank God for those of you that have just subscribed. Yes, and we thank God for those of you that are about to subscribe. Calling those things that are not as though they are. Yes, all praises to the Most High. Yes, all praises. Yes, yes, yes. We're still in the book of Jasher. 
I've been reading along in this here. Basically, what we're about to read is a bit of history and how things came about. And how the children of not only Egypt, but also the children of Jacob have caused themselves to be in battle with other nations. As soon as we find where we were, <laughs> I think I done, I done lost my way a little bit. <laughs> Yes, I have. It's, it's been, it's been a, a trick. I've been reading. I've read all the way down to about 70, looking up these things and trying to figure out what, what, what is going on. I've read this over before, and uh, we, were, we ended in verse 60, in chapter 60. But I had slid all the way over to chapter 65. Five. I was way. It got so interesting to me just reading over. And if you're reading over it, that's good. Now let's walk together and point some things out. If you haven't already seen them, or you might point some things out to me. It's okay. And we're in verse. We're in chapter sixty. We're in chapter sixty. The book of Jasher, chapter sixty. Chapter sixty. Now. You might see that in, in, in the title it might say chapter 60, but I skipped over 58. That's because from 57, uh, 50, I mean 59. 59 was a short chapter. So I just skipped over and kept going. It wasn't really short because usually I would do only about maybe 10, 20 minutes. But now I'm allowed 30 on this platform and even more on the other platform. Now. Jasher, the book of Jasher. Now we've read before that Angus and his brother Lucas. Now the, these, are, this is going on in the land of who? Shem, which is what they call the Middle East. It's the land of Shem. The people that you see in the land now are not the, the Aboriginal people. I'll put it that way. According to this narrative, they're not the edge of, not by hue, not by, not by birth, neither, neither by DNA, not at all. They're not Aboriginal people. Now, and the king of Sardunia command his servants that they should take a coffin and a brass. I mean, that's a pretty coffin now. Well, that was verse 25 of the 60th chapter, the 60th chapter of Jasher. Now, we're going to read through this, basically, because I really don't want to miss something, because there's something might, you might see. I can skip over things, but or I can say, oh, I know about all this. I don't want to hear about that. But we must also look at what historically God is doing. Yes. And it comes to great entertainment. It's also entertainment. I used to be entertained by the Bible and the stories in the Bible when I was younger. And when I first started out, just entertain. I would read for hours. I mean, I could, I could read a whole two, a book, maybe two books, and just the one sitting, just sit there, just imagining in my mind what is going on by the words that I understood. But also knew something was wrong with all of this. You ask yourself, if God never changes, why, why do we baptize and God never spoke of that? I mean, God never s talked about it. It never was a part of nothing. I mean, nothing. I said, now, and then why do we, why is yet Jesus God and then he's the son of Joseph? And why did the spirit overshadow Mary? When God strictly forbid the uh, angels, the watchers in the book of Enoch, and even in the book of uh, Genesis, he forbid them. But if you don't believe in the book of Enoch, we're going to go another route. He forbid them, and then he himself has sent a spirit to overshadow Mary and impregnate her. What kind of bamboozleness is this? We did not see this before. And then to take the blood of a man flesh to cleanse other flesh let's call a buck a buck 
And then it was sacrifice handled by the hand of heathen. But yet we justify it in so many ways. See, you, you done lost everything right there. It's a, just a total lie. I just got to put it that way. It's just a total lie. There's no way. It don't even match what God says even in your 66 book. It doesn't match it at all. You better start reading again. Or you're going to find yourself even in that place where the rich man that he spoke of. Not where Lazarus is, but where the rich man is. Because of you've been deceived. This is, this is a product even of Deuteronomy chapter 28. You cannot handle God's... A person that's not of the people of the Most High, the chosen people of the Most High, can't handle the sacrifice like that. Especially one who was called one of the people. No, it's not going to happen. I don't care how much you would proxy. They, they, take, the child, they take the priest and the Levites and all this and proxy them. Saying, oh, oh you, you do Romans, you can do it. And then here the Romans take it and make a whole church out of it. And now they say, we are the Israelites. 1948, throw people in there and now say, we're going to defend them whatsoever. Because they represent our supremacy. Uh, I can go deeper, but we're going to leave it there. And we're going to continue with this here until we get to the final what God is pointing out to here. Now, we're in Jasher chapter 60 and verse 26. And they built upon it a high tower there upon the high road, and they called its name after the name of Niblos unto the day, unto this day, and they also buried Ter Ternus, king of Babintu, there in that place with Niblos. And behold, upon the high road between Alphenu and Romar, the grave of Niblos is on one side and the grave of Tornos on the other. This is a bit of history. And the pavement between them unto this day. And when Niblos was buried, Lucas his father returned with his army and his, in, to his land, Sardunia. And Agis, his brother, king of Africa, <laughs> that's a joke right there, went with his people unto the city of Bimintu, by Bintu. That is the city of Tor Tornus. And the inhabitants of Babintu heard of his fame, and they were greatly afraid of him. Now, could that be a country named Africa on the continent? The continent was different. It could have been. I mean, we, we, it could have been a country named Africa. But yet, they turned around and they gave you all kind of narratives that this was named after a colonizer and all of this it could have been africa named a country named before in ancient times this might have been where the name africa came from it might not be who they call leo africanus it just might be africa or translates to africa now verse 29 and the inhabitants of Ubuntu heard of his fame and they were greatly afraid of him and they went forth to meet him with weeping and supplication and the inhabitants of Bimentu entreated Angus not to slay them nor destroy their city and he did so for Bimentu was in those days reckoned as one of the cities of the children of Chittim therefore he did not destroy the city you, you, those of you that have been through the 66 books you've heard of Chittim some of them call it Chittim and some will just say like it is Chittim Yes. Now, therefore, he did not destroy the city. Verse 30. And from that day forth, the children of the king of Africa, which would be a country on the continent, I would say, that was named. That's probably why the book was thrown out, because Leo Africanus was not probably not the name, his name. They just gave you something to make you think that it was... You have to realize, these people make themselves look good. They make themselves look like gods. Wise. Faultless. Holy. Perfect. Pure. Now, it's all wrapped up in lies. that look clean. <laughs> okay. Verse 31. And it was after this that Angus 
turned with his army and they came to the city of Pozimna. Pozimna. Pozimna, yes. And Angus took thence Jania, the daughter of Uzu, for a wife and brought her to his city unto Africa. Now, again, this, what he's calling Africa is a country. It's got to be a country. It's not the continent. Later on, the continent might have been named that, and they told you all kind of other names. Chapter 61, and we're in verse 1. And it came to pass that, as, that at that time Pharaoh, king of Egypt, commanded all his people to make him a strong palace in Egypt. He also commanded the sons of Jacob to assist the Egyptians in building and the Egyptians made a beautiful and elegant place for royal habitation and he dwelt therein and he renewed his government and he reigned securely. So we know that even with this, the children of Jacob were either taught or knew how to build the way the style of Egypt or the style in the style of Egypt. Okay. And Zebulun, the son of Jacob, died in that year. That's one son. That is in the 70th second, the seventy-second year of the going down of the Israelites to Egypt. And Zebulun died a hundred and fourteen years old and was put into a coffin and given into the hands of his children. That's, that's normal. Time is going down. And in the seventieth year, in the seventieth year, died his brother Simeon. That's two. And he was a hundred and twenty years old at his death. And he was also put into a coffin and given into the hands of his children. In other words, they kept among themselves. They kept in their tribal, or should I say their clans. They kept within their clans, their marriages and all these things. And Zepho, the son of Eliaphaz, the son of Esau, captain of the host of Angus, king of Dinahaba, was still daily enticing Angus to prepare for battle to fight the children of Jacob, the sons of Jacob in Egypt. In other words, he want to go way in Egypt. You fight, you're going to fight Jacob, and you're going to fight Egypt too, because that's their land. And was unwilling to do this thing, for his servants had related to him all the might of the sons of Jacob. Now, these sons of Jacob, although Abraham started out as a Syrian, still, these his children was born, or the sons of Jacob was born in Egypt, which by these standards were called, you will call them Egyptians. They were not Israelites. They were not even known as Israelites. They were Egyptians, children of Egypt, children of Misraim. It wasn't even Egypt. It was Misraim, or whatever they would call it at that time. And we have to really recognize what's going on here. Now, we're in verse 5. And Angius was unwilling to do this thing, for his servants had related to him all the might of the sons of Jacob that they had done unto them in their battle with the children of Esau. And Zepho in those days daily enticing Angius to fight with the son of Jacob in those days. And after sometimes Angius hearkened to the words of Zepho and consented to him to fight with the sons of Jacob. Now there is someone enticing even the country, these countries today, to fight. You have one country that really don't desire to fight. All they say is that, hey, let us be at peace. Just don't bring your war, instruments of war, or bring this part of our land that we have allotted to these people to govern. Don't come there. But one entity said, well, we're going to give them arms, and we're going to do all this. We're going to proxy them, and we're going to cause a battle. And it was going on for a long time until they actually gave in. And this is what we are faced with today. And Zepho consented to him to fight with the sons of Jacob in Egypt. And Angius got all his people in order, a people numerous as the sand which is upon the seashore. And he formed his resolution to go to Egypt to battle. And amongst the servants of Angius was a youth, 15 years old, Balaam. Balaam was 15. Well, there's many, there's other people named Balaam. That was the god that they worshipped, so they named him after that. And the sons of the son of Beor, uh, there was a son of Beor in the book of, I 
think it's uh, Leviticus or either Deuteronomy was his name and the youth was very wise understood in the art of witchcraft or either was it's a copy into the 66 books we don't know and Angus said unto Balaam conjure for us I pray thee with, with the witchcraft that we may know who will prevail in this battle to which we are now proceeding this is a whole different scene whole different scenario the children of Israel was not free so we still have a Balaam son of Beor but the thing has changed. This was a Balaam, son of Beor, but the fact was he was asking Balak to curse the children of Israel. Now, that we might know who will prevail in this battle to which we are now proceeding. And Balaam ordered that they should bring him wax, and he made thereof the likeness of chariots and horsemen representing the arm, arm this would be like voodoo wouldn't it wouldn't this be like voodoo I mean you're making a sort they sort of kind of voodoo listen to me those of you on the island in African countries listen it says now representing the army these were wax figures representing the armies of Angus and the army of Egypt and he put them in the cunning prepared waters and he had for that purpose and he took in his hands the bowls of myrtle trees and exercised his cunning and he joined them over the water and there appeared unto him in the water the resembling images of the host of Angus falling before the resembling images of the Egyptians and the sons of Jacob now that's the work of the most high now we could say we could also say that these things also were taught of the righteous Voodoo, what we consider as evil voodoo, or some of you say it is, or whatever, it's all evil to me. But the fact is, it was taught by the righteous. It, it, these things are really real, to tell you the truth. The only way you can defeat them is law, statutes, commandments, and orders of the Most High. Yes, and sometimes God will have mercy upon you. But these things are the powers of devils. And they can do some crazy, they can cause, these devils can cause diseases, they can cause all kind of, I mean, blindness and everything else. These devils can cause things because they were given this from the Most High. He said, I create evil. It's not that he's evil in himself, he create evil to do and go and execute those things that he want of his enemies. They have to do it, they have no choice. But yet they can do things that they're supposed to do. They can be summoned in other ways. And this was one of the ways that they were summoned to do these things. See, you must make a buck a buck. Those of you Christians, you've you walked out into la-la land. This is a real world. Real spirits, real things that are happening to people. Unexplained death, unexplained illness, or unexplained blindness, unexplained mental illness. All these are the works of devils. And it could be the work of voodoo. In some countries, they call it witchcraft. Some of them call them uh, a witchery or some type of eat. This is summoning a spirit that is a purpose to do evil unto men. God creates evil. And that evil is to those who are evil. And he joined them over the water, and they've appeared to him. Now, this is God doing this. Falling before him, resembling the images of the Egyptians and the sons of Jacob. And Balaam told this thing to Angus, and Angus despaired and did not harm himself to go down to Egypt to battle. And he remained in his city. And when Zepho, the son of Eliphaz, saw Angus de despaired of going forth to battle with the Egyptians, Zepho fled from Angus from Africa. And he went and came to Chittim. And all the people of Chittim received him with great honor, and they hired him for to fight their battles all the days. And Zepho became exceedingly rich in those days. And the troop of the kings of Africa still spread themselves in those days. And the children of Chittim as assembled which, and went to Mount Kaptesia on the account of the troops of Angus, king of Africa, who were, who were advancing upon them. And it was one day that Zepho lost a young heifer, and he went and seek, to seek it, and heard it lowing around 
the mountain. And Zepho went and he saw, and behold, there was a large cave at the bottom of the mountain, and there was a great stone, and there at the entrance of the cave, and Zepho split the stone, and he came into the cave, and he looked, and behold, a large animal was devouring the ox. Now this had to be a big animal for an ox. For from the middle upward it resembled a man, and from the middle downward it resembled an animal. And Zepho rose up against the animal and slew it with his words. And the inhabitants of Chittim heard this thing, and they rejoiced exceedingly and said, What shall we do unto this man who has slain this animal and devoured our cattle, that devoured our cattle? And they all assembled to consecrate one day in the year to him. See, these people were very superstitious, very religious, very, should I say, spiritual people. Spirituality doesn't mean that it's all good. And it doesn't, and, and the spirituality even of the colonizer is not good. They're idol worshippers. Even they have spirits, evil spirits that haunt them, and they do witchcraft even of the best of them that you think that don't even in some of your churches they have those that do witchcraft in the church in the basement in a dark space where you do not know of let's continue what shall we do to this man who was slain and they assemble and consecrate one day a year in other words they start worshiping him as a god one with power and they called the name thereof zephyr after his, the name therefore zephyr after his name and they brought unto him drinking offerings year after year on that day. This is a live man, idolized. And we do the same thing. This is why birthdays. They annually idolize this man. Birthdays, anniversaries. You, you, out, day out of year, you idolize your daughters, your sons, your wife, your mothers, your fathers, idolizing them. See, the evil know what it's doing. But, that belongs to the children of unbelief. But the children that do know their God will not do these things. And at that time, Jania, the daughter of Uzu, wife of King Aegeus, became ill. See, they hated this because this also talks in a tone that is a Negroid tone, should I say. Negroid or African or it talks in those who are of that hue. With the kinky hair, some of, them, some of us have big, small, little lips and big noses and all these things. Yes, it speaks to that identity. Even the word Uzo is African within itself. And King Angius became ill, and her in illness was heavily felt by Angius and his officers. And Angius said unto his wise men, What shall I do to Jania? And how shall I heal her from her illness? And his wise men said unto him, Because air out of our country is not like the air of, of the land of Chittim and our water is not like that water therefore this has the queen become ill for through the change of air and water she became ill and also because in, their, in her country she drank only the water which came from Purma which her ancestors had brought up with bridges and Angia commanded his servants and they they brought, in other words, channels. They brought up with, you know, how you create from wood or bamboo or whatever. You can create pipes or whatever. And they brought unto him vessels of the water of Purma, belonging to Chittim. And they weighed those waters with all the waters of the land of Africa. This is a country, again, it's not the continent that was named Africa. That's weird. And they found out those waters lighter than the waters of Africa. And Angus saw this thing, and he commanded all his officers to assemble the hewers of stone in thousands and tens of thousands. They hewed stones without number, and the builders came, and they built exceedingly strong bridge, and they conveyed the spring of water from the land of Chittim unto Africa. And those waters for Jania, queen, and for all her concerns to drink from and to bake, wash, and bathe, wherewith also to water there with all the seed from which food can be obtained and all the fruit of the ground. And the king commanded that they should bring of the soil of Chittim in large ships and they also brought stones to build therewith and the builders built places for Jenia, 
queen, and the queen became healed of her illness. In other words, clean water. Right now, we know our water is not clean. It's, it's really reconstituted sewage, period. Most of the water that we drink, unless you drink from a well, that's basically what it is. And at the revolution of the year of the troops of Africa, continue coming to the land of Chittim, this would be in the land of Edom, to plunder as usual. And Zephyr, the son of Laphaz, heard their report, and he gave orders concerning them, and he fought with them, and they fled before him, and he delivered the land of Chittim. It's just like those who would come to the land of Burkina Faso or Niger and plunder the land and go back and take the goods and make their products or sell them to other peoples and come back again and take over the villages and trying to extract the resources. So it's going to happen. This is happening even in this day. Come on here. And fled before him and he delivered the land of Chittim from them. And the children of Chittim saw the valor of Zepho and the children of Chittim resolved and they made Zepho king over them and became king over them while he reigned. And they went to subdue the children of Tubal. Now they went over across the Euphrates and all the surrounding islands. And their king Zepho went at their head and they made war with Tubal. Now these, all of this was just black people, period. I mean, this is what they classified as. They were nothing, but then they were dignitaries. They were great warriors. So what happened? Deuteronomy chapter 28, again, not just with Israel, but with all the dark nations. This has occurred. But Israel is hidden in these dark nations. And the children of Tubal and all the surrounding islands and their king Zepho went at their head and they made war with Tubal and the islands and they subdued them. And when they returned from the battle, they renewed his government for him and they built for him a very large palace for his royal habitation and seat. And they made a large throne for him. And Zepho reigned over the whole land of Chittim for over the land of and over the land of Italia. 50 years. Italy. Black folks rule in Italy. They didn't want you to know this. Black folks really. Italy, Italy Chile. This is across the Euphrates. Italia. You get an old fashioned map. You go and just look up maps. Just ancient. Ancient maps. You'll see Italia. Italy. Oh, and then if you go back into the Book of Jubilees, you'll see where we tell you where all these lands were. Yes. And these were black people. But the fact is, is that God had changed everything around. All these people, Italia and all these people of Chittim, they're all filtered into Africa. They always ran into Africa eventually because that's where the masses of those that look like them are. For some reason, that over time, it has caused this to be. And now... You have these colonizers, not only of Italy and uh, all these places, Russia and all these other places. They wouldn't, it, it, Russia was a place that I don't know how it changed, but it changed. But the fact is, is that Deuteronomy 28 had a lot to do with this. Although Russia is not one place that have caused any ruckus with any of the dark skinned nations, but have been really an ally or just held their peace with the dark-skinned nations but uh, those others have joined themselves to whoever they think is the power you know or have associated themselves because of their light skin uh, you have those in you have those in should I say India those are dark-skinned people you can tell that they're all black people you have India, you have uh, all these other nations. They were dark-skinned people. And we're going to conclude this. For him, they built for him a very large palace for his royal habitation. We're in verse 25 of verse six, chapter 61 of the book of Jasher and his seat. And they made a large throne for him. And Zepho reigned over the whole land of Chittim and over the whole land of Italia or Italy. 
50 years. Zeppo. And with that, we're going to say, <laughs>